Welcome to Defiance High School. Today's Prep Baseball Report Classic. Game number one of four on this day features the Coldwater Cavaliers and the Liberty Benton Eagles. My name's Todd Walker. It'll be my pleasure to bring you the play-by-play -play descriptions and accounts of the ball game. Nate Garlock is with me to help on the broadcast. And our great WOSN crew is here as well on a bright sunny morning that belies a pretty chilly condition at the moment and a bit breezy, but for a morning time, it's uh, certainly not bad, especially after yesterday's rain. Let's set the lineup for Liberty Benton. Leading off is the shortstop, Lincoln Garlock. Batting second is twin brother in center field, Cam Garlock. Batting third at third base is Connor Hiss. Batting fourth is the designated hitter, Jake Elkert. Batting fifth and pitching is Trevin Lieb. Batting sixth at first base is Connor Arnold. Batting seventh in right field, Ashton Crawford. Batting eighth and second base is Mason Maud. And batting ninth in left field is Landon Stansberry. And the Eagles will be batting against Mason Welsh for Coldwater. This will be his fifth appearance of the year, his third start. He's only thrown 11 and a third innings. He's allowed 12 hits and five runs, three earned, four walks and 17 strikeouts. A 185 earned run average for Mason Welsh. Let's set the cold water defense behind him. Luke Sudoff at first base, Braylon Harlemer at second, Evan Harlemer at short, Braxton Howell at third. The outfield left to right, Keenan Brueggemann, Marcel Blassengame and Curtis Durr. And the catcher is A.J. Harlemer. Our umpires for game number one, Jeffrey Bachman behind the plate and Jay Moran on the bases. Again, this is first of four games today and this Prep Baseball Report Classic. Good to be here as we get into things just after 10.30 in the morning. Of course, if you want to get four games in, you got to probably now, start pretty early. But this uh, excellent ball. facility is uh, fully turfed. They have lights, and we are ready to go. Obviously, Liberty Benton in their uh, blue uniforms with the white pinstripes. Coldwater with their classic black and orange. Expected to warm up as the day continues. Should get into the mid 60s by the time the day is over. Coldwater rated number five in the state in the Ohio Prep Baseball Report rankings in Division Three. Liberty Benton rated number eight. So a top 10 matchup. Eagles are 15 and two. Coldwater is 13 and two. First pitch, bunted. Third base side, pitcher backhands, guns to first. That is a nice play by the pitcher, Mason Welsh, to retire Lincoln Garlock, who tried to bunt his way on. And Mason Welsh, fielding his position very well, gets the first out. Made it look relatively easy. And first pitch gets an out. And that'll bring up Cam Garlock. Yeah, it was a great job by Welsh, fielding his position that time, coming off the mound. A good idea by Garlock. Almost caught him off guard, but a bang bang play down to first. By the way, Nate Garlock uh, relation there. You, we think fairly distant. It's down the line yeah. a little bit, but you know, not the most common last name. So. No. Nothing and one to Cam Garlock, and there's a breaking ball that broke way too much and bounced in there for Mason Welsh. She got ahead with a strike. So Lincoln and Cam are twins, but you may have noticed uh, Lincoln batted right handed, Cam's batting left handed. So they're not that similar all the way across the board. There's a ball high. Make it two balls and a strike. Mason Welsh with a very unique approach as he stands facing fully forward as there's a ground ball to second. Fielded going toward the bag by Braylon Harlemer and he makes the throw for out number two. Interesting how Welsh gets on the uh, slab there. He's got both feet riding the rubber and uh, fully squared up on his catcher. Two up, two down, and Connor Hiss, the third baseman, stands in for the Eagles. Just underway in this game. Mason Welsh looking for a one, two, three opening frame, and he blows that one past Hiss, a 79 mile per hour fastball from Welsh. I said both these teams top 10 rated in the Ohio Prep Baseball Report D3 rankings. So 
this is a uh, good late season non-conference matchup. Strike two, 80 miles an hour that time as Welsh is getting unwound a little bit here. Getting that velocity up there. And you mentioned four games here today at the complex. And what a way to start it. Top 10 matchup, get a full day of baseball going. Welsh working at a great pace. That one's upstairs. He hit 80 again there. Of course, Coldwater, a, a perennial state tournament team. They have won seven state championships over the years. One two pitch. Hit hard toward the hole and passed third in the left field. Braxton Howell. Going to his left, could not get a glove on it. And Connor Hiss has the first base hit of the day. A two out single. And that will bring up Jake Elkert. Elkert, a 480 hitter. He has a double on the season. This LB team has 14 triples. They don't have any home runs, but uh, they ball low. They have 27 doubles and 14 triples. Like most high school teams nowadays, rarely do you see a home run. LB trying to start a two-out rally here. They got a man at first. Ball two. Of course, the other thing that's somewhat interesting during these non-conference games, especially late in the season, is sometimes, of course, you will hold your number one pitcher or maybe even your number two for a pending league matchup. So sometimes you don't always see the best pitchers on these respective teams in this situation. There's a strike. Two balls, one strike. Another lefty in the lineup for Liberty Benton. Elkert, the cleanup man. Got Connor Hiss at first with two out. Long pause by Welsh. That one's fouled back. This is a beautiful complex here. There are diamonds all around. A couple softball diamonds. They have a game going on over to our left behind that first base dugout is the varsity softball field. All of it turf as well. Such a luxury to have in Ohio in spring being able to oh, have that you, turf. You aren't a kidding. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner goes. Foul ball. And it hit the pole, holding the net behind home plate and carrying back out onto the field. As far as the dimensions here, 375 to center, 325 down each line, 355 to the power alleys. Oh, another 2-2 two -two pitch coming from Mason Welsh to Jake Elkert. A weak ground ball, right side. Second baseman nearly threw it away, but a stretch by Luke Sudoff grabs that throw from Braylon Harlemert. And Mason Welsh works around a one-out base hit to retire the side without a run. We'll go to the bottom of the second, and we have no score after a half inning on the People's Bank and Coldwater scoreboard on WOSN. Bottom of the first on the People's Bank of Coldwater scoreboard. Here's the Coldwater lineup facing Trevin Lieb. Marcel Blasengame in center field leads off. Braylon Harlemert at second, bat second. A.J. Harlemert, the catcher, bats third. Braxton Howe at third base, bats fourth. Evan Harlemert, the shortstop, bats fifth. Luke Sidoff, the first baseman, bats sixth. Mason Welsh, the pitcher, bats seventh. Curtis Durer, the right fielder, bats eighth. Keegan Brueggemann in left field, bats ninth. Trevin Lieb bounces one in there. And like Welsh, Lieb has been somewhat limited this year in his pitching. He's thrown only nine innings. This will be his fifth appearance, his second start. There is a strike. The Liberty Benton defense, Connor Arnold at first base, Mason Mott at second base, Lincoln Garlock at short, Connor Hiss at third. There is a strike. Left to right in the outfield, Landon Stansbury, Cam Garlock, Ashton Crawford. Two balls and a strike. Come backer on the off-speed pitch, and Lee will take it most of the way himself before flipping it over to Connor Arnold. So one up, one down. As Marcel Blassen game is out one to three. That's exactly how the first inning began for Liberty Benton, although Lincoln Garlock had tried to bunt his way on. There's Braylon Harlemert, 372 batter. 
Cavs second baseman. Takes a ball outside. Braylon and the on deck man, AJ Harlemert, are twins. So each team featuring twin brothers prominently in their lineup. Hard hit ball in the hole to right base hit. Nice hit, not trying to do too much with it. Just found some opening there. As Coldwater gets their first base runner of the morning, actually. Cavs, like the Eagles, do not have a home run of the season. They have 21 doubles and eight triples. And Coldwater entering play at 13 and two. Liberty Benton at 15 and two. Lieb comes set and has that one pulled hard, but foul pass third by A.J. Harlemert, the catcher. So Coldwater gets a one out hit. Try to build off that. A.J. 341 batter. Three doubles, nine RBI. Bottom of the first here. An off speed pitch not handled by the catcher. And I'm not sure if the runner was off before the pitch or not. He had a lead, he, uh, nice secondary that time, recognized that the ball had been dropped, so he took off. So we're gonna call it a pass ball then. Yeah. Wild pitch. We'll take that. 1-1, one, one. and that's another one that skips past the catcher. So another wild pitch. So the Cavaliers, uh, after a one out base hit, have seen two wild pitches uncorked by Trevin Lieb, and right away they have a scoring threat. 2-1, and way upstairs. 3-1. and one. And you know, we talked about Lieb's only thrown nine innings this year, and maybe a little uh, amped up here. Three and one. There he got a strike over with an off speed. And even though this is a non-conference game, it does feel like it uh, has a little bit riding on it, being a, a multi-game event against a good team like Coldwater. And there's a swing and a miss. A.J. Harlemer helping out Lieb. There's the throw to the first baseman, and beating the throw back home as Harlemert, he scores on the strikeout. It was a great job by Harlemert down there on third. Made sure he stood stood, uh, stood his ground, didn't retreat, and as soon as that ball left to head over to first, he took off to home and gives Coldwater that early one run lead. That is classic Coldwater baseball right there. They are amongst the best I've ever seen at always pressuring you. And uh, the place we're playing, Defiance, always does that too. I mean, they will take every inch you give them and then take another. And right there, they just stole a run. One nothing, Coldwater is Braxton Howell. Fouled one back to even the count of the ball strike. Lieb delivers and that's popped up right side. Not under it and he has it. So the Cavaliers steal a run with a single two wild pitches and a strikeout throw to first base taking home from third. On the People's Bank and Coldwater scoreboard, after one, one nothing Cavaliers on WOSN. Out of the second inning on the People's Bank and Coldwater scoreboard, one nothing Cavaliers lead here in Defiance at this Prep Baseball Report Classic. First of four games here today. Trevin Lieb, the pitcher for Liberty Benton, leads off the second inning and takes a strike from Mason Welsh. Welsh gave up a two out hit in the first, but no further damage, and now he's ahead nothing in two. Lieb at the plate a 350 hitter. Couple, or I should say a double and a triple, so a couple of extra base hits on his ledger. 0-2 pitch, fouled off the plate. The Cavaliers have stole a run basically on three wild pitches, although the third one, the catcher threw to first to complete the strikeout, and 
Braylon Harlemert sprinted home from third and beat the throw back from the first baseman. Uh, I just got a piece of that leave. That thing was going to bounce it like three feet in front of the plate. I'm not sure I got a bat to that one. The sun and the clouds uh, intermittently winning the battle here this morning. Every once in a while the sun pops out. But mostly cloudy right now as an 0-2 pitch comes from Welsh and it's popped out of play. I love the pace that Welsh has right now out on the mound. And I think that's keeping Lee guessing a little bit. He doesn't have a real opportunity to kind of see what's coming in. He's just kind of swinging at things, just trying to get a piece of it to stay alive. Well, certainly the first time through the lineup, you see a lot of that anyhow, if you've not seen a guy before, especially. And that one bounces in there. One ball, two strikes. Of course, high school games always have tended to have pretty good pace. Unlike the big leagues where they had to put a clock in the outfield to make guys actually move. One, two pitch. Swing and a miss, pulled the string on him and fooled him badly. I'm not sure that was gonna be a strike, but Lee swung at it, missed it. And that's the first strikeout recorded by Mason Welsh. Brings up Connor Arnold, the first baseman. Connor, a 344 batter. This one's popped up, middle of the infield behind second. The shortstop, Evan Harlemer, puts it away. So just like the first, I think two up, two down for Mason Welsh. Gave up a hit last inning with two outs. He'll try to make it a one, two, three inning this time with Ashton Crawford having different ideas as he steps in. Strike call. Welsh working quickly, delivers the 0-1 pitch and bounces in another one. I'm not sure what that is, but he is really struggling to throw it. But again, he's... Uh, Guy that's not thrown a ton of innings and he's getting a chance to pitch against a good ball club here today. 1-1. One, one. That one's upstairs. One of the things that good teams are trying to do usually down the stretch is build a little depth in their pitching ranks. You get into the tournament, you never know when you need a fourth or fifth arm that can come in and get outs. There's a little tapper in front of the plate fielded by Welsh. The pitcher guns it at first and he got the out. Second nice play off the mound defensively by Welsh, and that's a perfect inning. On to the bottom of the second, Coldwater one, Liberty meant nothing on the People's Bank of Coldwater scoreboard. You're watching High School Baseball on WOSN. Coldwater come to bat for the second time here in Defiance. Todd Walker, Nate Garlock, our WOSN crew here for the Ohio Prep Baseball Report Classic. Evan Harlemer leads off for Coldwater, takes ball one. Big thanks to the People's Bank and Coldwater, our scoreboard sponsor today. People's Bank and Coldwater, we are invested in the communities we serve. Evan Harlemer to head in the count, two balls and nothing as Lieb brings it and misses again, 3-0. Oh. I think you can probably hear the cacophony below us. We are above the first base dugout here and that's the Coldwater team raising a ruckus, and there's ball four. That's another great thing about high school baseball and softball a lot of times, for that matter, Nate, the, the energy a lot of times is off the charts. Yeah, you know, everybody's getting in on it. You see everybody off the bench out cheering, and that Coldwater team is out there making sure that they can be heard. There's a pick the first and diving back in is Harlemer. Of course, Coldwater, as I mentioned in the first inning, renowned for putting pressure on you with their base running. Lieb comes set, pitches, and that is a pulled foul down the left field side. That might have hit Nate Garlock's SUV out there. Oh, no, that was a strategic play out there. We're in between some cars. I think we're oh, okay. Oh, you're good? Yeah, yeah. I think we're all right. It's not your first rodeo, <laughs> huh? We've got some protection out there. No balls and a strike to the Coldwater first baseman, Luke Sudoff. Runner goes, that's a ball, throw down, a good one, but a little offline. Oh, they got the tag down. 
I'll tell you what, that was a good throw down there by Brady Berkmeyer, the catcher, as far as the velocity. His shortstop, second baseman, had to reach over and get the tag down. Nice job by Mason Mod. Great throw, even it's better. Close play. Yeah, better catch and put the tag on. There's a pop fly into short center field that will be fielded by the center fielder, Cam Garlock, for out number two. And just like that, the dynamic of this inning has changed greatly. Yep. You know, Lee struggling a little bit with his control and four pitch walk to lead off the game. We saw him have a, uh, some control issues there in that first inning, too. So you figured Coldwater's going to put the pressure on there, but caught stealing and a pop up, and Lee's almost out of this. Oh! There's a ball upstairs. This is Mason Welsh, Lieb's opposite number, the pitcher slash designated hitter. He hits it hard up the middle and the base hit. And Mason Welsh, a 382 batter, has his 14th hit of the season. So he tries to start something with two outs. Curtis Durr will step in, 231 hitter. There's a ball in the turf, well played by Berkmeyer. Lee with the long pause and the pitch to Dewar. He swings through it. Quick throw to first by Berkmeyer, a little offline. Diving back in is Welsh. Curtis Dewar, 231 batter. Just three hits in somewhat limited action. Two of them are doubles, They're driven in six. There's a fly ball the other way to right, right center. And the center fielder runs out from under his hat, Cam Garlock, and makes the play on the run. So the Cavs get a walk and a single, but no runs there in the second. On to the third, Coldwater one, Liberty Benton nothing on the People's Bank of Coldwater scoreboard on WOSN. Through two innings here at Coldwater, or at uh, Defiance, Coldwater leads at one nothing over Liberty Benton. Todd Walker and Nate Garlock back here at Defiance, the Ohio Prep Baseball event here at Defiance. First of four games today. Mason Mott is the leadoff man here in the second inning. And there is a fastball that got away a little bit from Jason Welsh. One oh pitch. Chopper over the mound. Shortstop Evan Harlemer makes the play. So again, seems to be the batters are fairly aggressive, not seeing a whole lot of pitches being taken. And uh, you know, that's okay. They're aggressive here early. Landon Stansbury, the left fielder now bats. 222 batting average on the season. That's a hard hit ball in the hole to the left. Line drive for the number nine hitter, Stansberry. That's the second hit of the day for LB. And that brings up Lincoln Garlock. Back to the top of the lineup. Well, and as you mentioned, you know, still not seeing a whole lot of pitches, jumping on the first pitch that time. Able to rope that out to left for a single. I think the other thing is they've seen Welsh really struggle with that breaking ball, so maybe they're just looking for the fastball, and when they see it, they're swinging. That one's a little up. Lincoln Garlock tried to bunt his way on the first time up, but Welch made a nice play coming off the mound to throw him out in a close play. Mason out of the stretch, bends way over there, leans on that left thigh, and now comes set sort of a crab walk position. Delivers. Bunt again, it's popped up, but it spins away, and the pitcher can't field it cleanly. And now they throw back to second, and they got him. How about that? Mental mistake that time. A little bit too wide coming around second, and then got a little caught up underneath his feet as he's trying to get back, as you can see on the replay. Just a little bit late. Cold water with a fortunate break, and their heads up play. Out at second. 
Well, Lincoln Garlock gets the bunt hit, but then Stansberry's thrown out one to four. Good job by Braylon Harlemer to sneak back in behind the runner. So now two outs with Cam Garlock at the back. One nothing, Coldwater. Foul back. So we saw Coldwater, good base running, stole a run in the first, and for Liberty Benton there, maybe a little over aggressiveness by Stansberry. May have cost LB a scoring chance here in the third. Throw back to first, diving back in is Lincoln Garlock. No runs, three hits for Liberty Benton. One run, two hits for Coldwater. And there's a bounced throw over to first. A good pick by Luke Sudoff. You can tell that that speed that Lincoln Garlock possesses is in Welsh's head a little bit that time. As they've seen two bunt hits, able to get a hit out of that second one. And they're worried about him taking this bag. Well, one pitch is down and in. Yeah, I think sometimes pitchers get so preoccupied with the runner that they get themselves off their game as far as pitching. We'll see if Welch can bear down and get the third out here against the other half of the Garlock combo at the top of this lineup. Runner goes, strike call, throw down, and it gets through second base into center field. But Cam Lincoln Garlock had to hit the deck hard on his slide, so he could not advance. And Marcel Blassengame was there pretty quickly. So Lincoln Garlock, a stolen base. He's in scoring position, but now one and two on Cam. You know, and I think that that all just came down to what we just talked about, the speed uh, that Garlock has. Is it was a great pitch. It was not a great pitch to run on. And the catcher had plenty of time, but I think they knew how fast he was, rushed his throw and offline, and probably fortunate that Garlock didn't get up and take third on that overthrow. One, two pitch, off speed, fouled off the leg of Cam Garlock. So Cam that time it swung right through it, missed it, still got hit. As it wasn't able to get out of the way. It wasn't like it went off of his uh, bat, ricocheted down. One ball, two strikes. Runner at second in scoring position for Liberty Benton with two out. Long look by Welch, pitches, off speed missed. That was really off speed. The gun says 58 miles an hour. Yeah, I think, you know, you mentioned a little bit ago, Welsh really struggling with that off speed stuff. So Liberty Benton able to sit back and they're just looking straight fastball now. Two balls, two strikes. And that missed down and in. So full count to Cam Garlock. Mason Welsh trying to end this uh, Liberty Benton threat in the top of the third. Fly ball to short right field. In fact, the second baseman has enough time, Braylon Harlemer, to get out there and field it and retire the side. So Liberty Benton with a couple of hits, but a base running blunder kind of short circuits things. They leave one on the People's Bank of Coldwater scoreboard after two and a half. Cavaliers won, Liberty bet nothing on WOSN. Back here in Defiance, it's a little chilly, but the pan still tastes good. <laughs> Going to the bottom of the third, Coldwater won, Liberty bet nothing. Cavs coming to back, Keegan Brueggemann will lead off and he bounces one to third playing in and making the play as the third baseman, Connor Hiss. So one pitch, one out here in the third inning. As both teams continue to be swinging early in the count for the most part. Back to the top of the lineup now for Coldwater, Marcel Blassen game. Marcel, a 380 hitter, two doubles and a triple, eight RBI. That one is lined off the third baseman's glove, and that's gonna be a hit. Well, Hiss was playing in, and Blasingame hit that one hard and just kind of handcuffed him. So base hit for Marcel with one out. Brings up Braylon Harlemer. I got the Hiss quickly, uh, but that's one of those ones where as a coach, that hits you in the glove, you gotta be able to catch those. Uh, yeah, especially in a game like this one. I think he came in and hit a 
hit the heel of his glove as he was not able to react quickly enough to that hard hit ball. So a runner at first, one out. And a throw to first, and Marcel Blasengame will dive back in there. Marcel, 11 stolen bases on the year. Cavs with 75 steals in 15 games coming in. Reeves pitch, misses. Of course, the Eagles know as well as anybody that the Cavs will run really from just about any spot in their lineup. Always putting pressure on you. There goes the runner. There's a ball, throw down, bounces in, and the shortstop was late getting there. I'll tell you what, if Lincoln Garlock was there, I think that might have been an out. He started going he, the other Yeah, you see on the replay, he for some reason broke toward third. I'm telling you, if he's on the bag for the throw, I think they get it. I think you're right, it was a good throw. For some reason that time though, Garlock, just a little bit of a mental lapse. Looked like he was gonna try to reset his position and didn't realize that the runner was taking off. Well, it's three and on out of Braylon Harlemert. As Trevin Lieb. He's in a bit of a jam here in the third. There's a strike called, got a fastball over. Cavs scored a run in the first on a single and three wild pitches, although the third was on a strikeout. The out was recorded at first, but the runner scored anyway. There's a line drive to left center and that'll drop. That's an RBI single for Braylon Harlemert. He's gonna stretch it to a double in fact. And there's great pace running again. Looks like just kind of a run of the mill single, but Braylon Harlemert hit first base and threw it into a higher gear. He was not thinking one, he was thinking two. And that's what he got, and Coldwater grabs a two nothing lead. Yeah, Harlemert right from the get go, never slowed down. He wanted to get out to second base, and Liberty Benton, a little bit of a lack of communication that time, kind of. <clears throat> Took a little bit off getting that one back into the infield. Coldwater still has a runner in scoring position. Here's A.J. Harlemert. He hits one diving stop in the hole by the third baseman, Hiss, and he throws him out. Great play by Hiss. He had a range going to his left, able to get, get on that and then get up and fire off a, a good, strong throw to first. And Braylon Harlemert moves to third on the play, and Braxton Howell will try to bring him in. The third baseman popped out to second to end the first inning. There is a strike, off-speed pitch. Braxton Howell, 300 batter, couple of doubles and a triple on the year. Team high, 16 RBI. No balls and a strike. Check this swing on a ball in the turf. One ball, one strike. Speed pitch is a strike, 59 miles an hour there from Lieb. Trying to minimize the damage here in the third, the Cavs have scored to take a two nothing lead. Now it bounces in and well played by Brady Berkmeyer behind the dish. Trevin Lieb sets. 2-2, and that was another slow one, 61 miles an hour. Braxton Howell just got a piece of it. Right hand batting third baseman for Coldwater, has that third run 90 feet away. And that one bounces, Berkemeyer can't smother this one in a wild pitch, scores a run for the second time today for Coldwater. Doesn't matter how you score them, just score them. That's three nothing. Yeah, Lee continuing to struggle a little bit with his control. We've seen him bounce a couple of pitches. And some wild pitches have gotten him in trouble. As two of the three runs uh, by Liberty have been thanks uh, via the, those wild pitches. Now three balls, two strikes. Here we go, 
Braxton Howell awaits the pitch and he chops it foul wide third. We will have the second game of the day at this event coming up here on WOSN as well as Wapakoneta takes on New Albany. Payoff pitch. Ball four. First walk issued by Lieb. Brings up Evan Harlemert. Check it, second walk issued by Lieb. Harlemert drew the first one, then was thrown out trying to steal in the second inning. Cavs have put up two here in the third inning on the People's Bank of Coldwater scoreboard, and there's a foul ball. Cavs on a Thursday defeated Marion Local in Coldwater, 6 nothing. For St. Henry, the big bully in the MAC right now, it's 7 0. Oh. There's a ball upstairs. And that includes a win over Coldwater, 12 2, back in early April. Redskins have already clinched a title tie in the MAC. There's a line drive to center, but playing right there and catching is Cam Garlock. So the Cavaliers. Get two more runs in the third on the People's Bank of Coldwater scoreboard. On to the fourth now. Cavs three, Eagles nothing on WOSN. It's the fourth inning now here in Defiance. Todd Walker and Nate Garlock with you. Thanks to the People's Bank of Coldwater. We are invested in the communities we serve. On the People's Bank scoreboard, you see it. Good news for the men in orange and black. Three nothing lead. On to the fourth. And a pitch high up and in to Connor Hiss from Mason Welch. Two top 10 teams in the Ohio Prep Baseball Report D3 rankings. There's a good fastball, swing and a miss. Connor Hiss singled in the first inning with two outs and was stranded. Mason Welch peers in over the top of that glove, kicks and fires, and there's a roller to short. Cooped up, throw across by Evan Harlemer, out number one. Coldwater, as always, a solid defensive team. Only 18 errors on the season coming in in 15 games and a 960 fielding percentage. Here's the stat that blew me away. Coldwater opponents have only attempted 10 steals this season. They've been thrown out eight times. Wow. So the fact that LB stole a base earlier in this game is a huge accomplishment. There's a line drive up the middle, a base hit on the first pitch to Jake Elkert. Yeah, Liberty Benton DH. Has a one out hit. So only one perfect inning's been turned in by either pitcher thus far. That was a one, two, three second for Mason Welch. And he's got a one out base runner here. He faces his opposite number, Trevin Lieb. Fly ball to short left field. Coming in and under it is Brueggemann, out number two. That brings up Connor Arnold, the first baseman. First baseman, Connor Arnold. No runs, four hits for Liberty Benton. Coldwater has four hits as well, but they have three runs. Thanks in large part to wild pitches. Connor Arnold awaiting the first pitch from Mason Welch. Off speed, got the plate, 59 miles an hour. That's just a, another sign of the high level of this uh, facility that they have a radar gun that actually works. <laughs> Posts on the scoreboard, and this place is top shelf. Off-speed pitch is hit to shortstop what diving to make the play. play is the shortstop Evan Harlemer. That ball was kind of a looping line drive and Evan Harlemer timed his dive perfectly 
and speared it for out number three. So a one out hit leads to nothing for Liberty Benton. We move into the bottom of the fourth. Coldwater leading this game three to nothing on WOSN. Changes for Liberty Benton as we go to the bottom of the fourth on the People's Bank of Coldwater scoreboard. A new pitcher as third baseman Connor Hiss comes in to take over on the mound. Mason Mod has moved to third base as a strike is called to Luke Sudoff. Connor Arnold moves from first to second to replace Mod. The former pitcher Trevin Lieb now playing first. And a little tapper foul by Luke Sudoff for the Coldwater Cavaliers. So Connor Hiss will come in. Trevor Lieb, Trevin Lieb, his own worst enemy with the wild pitches. Strike three called. Luke Sudoff is out shopping. Lieb threw four wild pitches. Two of them scored runs from third base. That was two of the three runs he allowed. A little bit of a change as his comes in. He's throwing 82 here in the early going after Coldwater was used to seeing. You know, Leave had gotten down into the 60s with a lot of his pitches as he seemed to be tiring a little bit. Yeah, his uh, seems to be a harder thrower for sure. Two straight breaking balls though. One a ball, a one swung out and missed there by Welch. Leave allowed four hits in three innings. He walked a pair, he did not strike out anybody. There's a ball two and oh. He allowed three runs, all were earned. Two balls, one strike. There's a fly ball to center coming in and trying to backhand it on the dive. Unsuccessfully was Cam Garlock. Big turn made by Mason Welch, but he'll hang right there as Action Crawford did a good job coming over to field that deflected ball. And it's a base hit for Mason Welch. Garlock had a lot of ground. He had to try to cover to get to that ball and it was tailing away from him. Tried to make a spectacular play on it, but just came up a little short. So Curtis Dewar will step in. Good backhand on that pitch behind the plate by Berkemeyer. Dewar flew out to center field to end the second inning. Three nothing Cavs and they are hoping to strike for more here in the fourth after a one out hit. There's ball two to Dewar, the right fielder. So again, Trevin Lieb now at first, Connor Arnold now at second, Mason Mod now at third for LB with Connor Hiss pitching. And the runner was on the move. That one is fly down the right field line. Out of play. Of course, down that way is sort of out of our line of sight as we sit over the first base dugout in the press box. The ball obviously didn't go out of play. It stayed on the field of play. That's why we have a delay here as the ball is now retrieved. Pitch from Hiss popped up. Out of play. Two balls, two strikes to Curtis Dewar. Cavs scored a run in the first, a two in the third. Runner goes and a pop up left side of the infield. Shortstop over behind the third baseman will get on it and make the catch for out number two. Having to hustle back to first was Welch. So Keegan Brueggemann will bat with two outs. Brueggemann grounded out to third base in the third inning. That ended up being a scoring inning. Single by Marcel Blasen game, a double by Braylon Harlemert, and a wild pitch. Scored the two runs. There's a strike to Keegan Brueggemann. Connor Hiss fires and misses. Evens a count at a ball a strike. Again, we just can't seem to get the sun to permanently win that battle today. We keep getting a little cloudier here. There is a strike in the outside corner with the breaking ball. Ball two strikes. That one's out. 
outside and low from Connor Hiss. Temps in the low 50s as we started today. We do expect it to get a bit warmer as we go into the mid 60s by the end of the day. And there's a foul ball and the hit and run was on there. As Dewar had, or I should say Welch had taken off from first. See the Wapak Redskins arriving, walking up the ramp outside the first base dugout. It'll be the second game of this event, and we'll have it here on WBOSN as they take on uh, Division I perennial power from Central Ohio, New Albany. Pop up right side of the infield in play for Lieb, and he makes it in foul territory. The first baseman puts it away. So one out hit, that's it for Coldwater. We are through four here in Defiance. Coldwater leads it 3-0 on WOSN. We've played four this innings here in Defiance. Todd Walker, Walker and Nate Garlock. Look at the folks, Nate. They want to see your pretty face. Oh, hey, look at that. How about that? Huh? All right. Well, uh, maybe, maybe they don't. There's uh, not there's not too much more hair up front than there is behind no, anyway. Uh, so it's about the same photo. Faces for radio, but uh, <laughs> Ken's putting us on camera. Good to be here for the first of four games today. And uh, this one is 3 nothing in favor of Coldwater. And we do have a pinch hitter here. For the Liberty Benton Eagles. Jared Hahn, and he rolls it to first on the first pitch, and he is retired by the first baseman, Luke Sudoff. So Jared Hahn, the junior outfielder, is retired. So with one out, Mason Maud will step in. There's a ball outside. Mason Welch beginning his fifth inning of work here for Coldwater. He's only thrown 11 innings this year, so he's getting a good run here, swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. Welch had 17 strikeouts and 11 and a third coming in. He has struck out only one through four and a third today. But he has not walked a batter. He's allowed four hits. He's got a three nothing lead. Two one pitch. Mod swings through a fastball. Two two. Not a lot of opportunities for uh, strikeouts tonight with the uh, way that the batters have been swinging early in the counts. We've only been seeing them get about one or two pitches deep before something's getting put in play. High fastball and chasing and missing and striking out is Mason Maud. So as soon as we talk about it, Welch rings up his second strikeout. And he'll pitch now to Landon Stansberry. Stansberry. Stansberry had a single out of the nine hole in the third inning. High fastball, 82 miles an hour. It's the fastest we've seen a Mason Welch pitched today on the radar gun here at Defiance. 1-0 pitch is outside. Stansberry made a base running miscalculation though in that third inning on a bunt hit by the next batter, Lincoln Garlock. Stansberry rounded second base too far and the Cavs threw back behind him and got him out. Foul ball makes it two and one. Cavs right-hander Mason Welch winds and fires. There's a solid line shot, but right at the second baseman. And that is a 1-2-3 inning for Mason Welch, his second in the five shutout innings he has tossed. On to the bottom of five here in defiance on the People's Bank of Coldwater scoreboard. Cavaliers lead it 3-0. You're watching High School Baseball on WOSN. Coldwater coming to bat in the fifth inning. They lead three to nothing on the People's Bank of Coldwater scoreboard. My name's Todd Walker. Nate Garlock is here with me. 
Marcel Blasen game will lead off the fifth inning. Takes a ball. He led off the game with a comebacker, then singled with one out in the third, stole second, and scored on the double by Braylon Harlemer. Strike called. Fastball at the knees from Connor Hiss, beginning his third, uh, second inning of work here today. Speed pitch outside. Hess has only thrown five innings this year in four previous appearances. Gave up eight hits and eight runs. Only three were earned. There's a swing and a miss. Six walks, three strikeouts prior to today. Got out of the fourth with no damage, just a single hit, 2-2. Two -two. Well, breaking balls outside. Three balls, two strikes. Strike three called. And Marcel Blassengame is out shopping. Fastball at the knees and Blassengame has the seat. Second strikeout for Hiss. He also struck out the leadoff batter in the fourth. Braylon Harlemert, the second baseman. Pretty good day, two for two. Single, double, he has scored twice. He's driven in a run. Takes a strike. The double for Braylon came in the third inning, produced the run, was his second of the year to go with three triples. Checks his swing on one of the turf. His 12 RBI now in the season is third on the team. One ball, one strike. There he hits one the other way. That may drop and it will and it's uh, caroming away from the right fielder. And that'll be an easy double. Stansberry really had to track that one down out in left field, I should say. And it's a double for Braylon Harlemer. Just a great pitch, or a great bit of pit, or hitting, excuse me, uh, on that time by Harlemer. Went with the pitch, went the other way, saw him the left fielder was shading away. And able to get a good, uh, good bat on the ball that time. Coldwater now. They're threatening to score one more time here in the bottom of the fifth. So two doubles and a single thus far for Braylon Harlemert. Here's A.J. Harlemert. He takes that ball up. A.J. struck out and grounded out. His strikeout, however, was a scoring play. As he was thrown out at first after the wild pitch bounced into the catcher, and as they were retiring A.J. at first, Braylon Harlemert sprinted home from third and beat the throw. Now it's 3-0. and oh. We got a uh, loose ball that just uh, scurried back behind the plate there. Got the uh, bullpen action going down the right field line here. Hiss down three and zero, oh, misses ball four. So four pitch walk by Connor Hiss, his first have men at first and second, and we're going to get a mound visit here. Liberty Benton, and I have a confab amongst the infielders and the pitcher and the coach. A reminder, today's scoreboard is brought to you by the People's Bank in Coldwater. People's Bank, we are invested in the communities we serve. You know, that last at bat, Hiss really looked like he had sped things up a little bit. It, you know, I'm not sure if the runner on second you know, got into his head a little bit or, or what, but we'd seen him working at a pretty good pace. But on that last at bat, he, he really seemed to pick things up and was all over the place with that four pitch at bat. So I'm sure this was just more of a, hey, you know, take a deep breath. We're all right. You know, we need you know, two outs here or we, one out. Need to get two more here. Let's just kind of calm things down a little bit. Take a deep breath and, you know, get this next batter. I'm told Curtis Doerr is the man toiling in the cold water bullpen. We might see him next inning. Meanwhile, this is Braxton Howell at the plate. That one is a little up, maybe a little in. Ball one. So five straight balls delivered by the Liberty Benton right-hander, Connor Hiss. 
There's one off the fist, and it will be caught by the second baseman over toward the line, route number two. Boy, if the first baseman had been able to stay at the bag, they might have been able to throw back behind A.J. Harlemert, but that's all a moot point. It's out number two, and that means Evan Harlemert will have to come through for this to be a scoring inning for Coldwater. Takes a strike, off-speed pitch. So far, it's been a Harlemert inning. Braylon with the double, A.J. with the walk, and Evan now with an opportunity to get a run on the board. A oh, one pitch is high. Evan walked and was thrown out stealing in the second, flew out to center field in the third. Check out his batting stance. He kind of leans back on that back leg, almost like he's sitting in a chair. And transfers forward, swing and a miss, throw to third, and that is a out. Another close play as we're gonna check out on the replay. The ball definitely beat him down there, but the tag looked like it might have been a little bit wide. Yep, well, it's a third out of the inning nonetheless, and unlike the big leagues, we won't sit here and wait for replay. We will just take it on to the sixth. Coldwater three, Liberty meant nothing on WOSN. Five innings in the books here on the People's Bank of Coldwater scoreboard from Defiance in this Ohio Prep Baseball Report Spring Classic. 3 nothing Coldwater, Liberty Benton running out of time. Lincoln Garlock leads off the sixth and takes a strike from Mason Welch, who begins his sixth inning of work. He's allowed four hits. He's not walked a man. He has struck out two. There's a off-speed pitch, pulled softly to third. Throw across by Braxton Howell. Two pitches, one out here in the sixth inning. And that has been the story of this game. I don't know if anybody's tracking pitch now, but he's got to be in the 60s. I mean, he's not thrown many pitches. And Liberty Benton has consistently been aggressive early in the count. And as I said, Welch hasn't walked anybody, so he's been around the strike zone. And his defense to this point has been flawless behind him. Here's Cam Garlock. Ball outside. Cam has pulled the ball both times, ground out to second, popped to second. So Braylon Harlemert has done him in each time. And this may be a third opportunity. And just like the other two, Braylon Harlemert is more than up to the challenge. And Connor Hiss will bat with two outs and nobody on. Got to be impressed with what Welch is doing here. You mentioned before the game started, hadn't thrown a whole lot of innings yet this year, but here we are in the sixth, and he's moving right through the lineup for the third time. Well, you don't win as many league titles and district and regional and state titles as Coldwater over the years without finding a way to develop guys during a season even. Got to find those extra arms. There's a strike. And today, a perfect opportunity for Welch to get a run against a good Liberty Benton team. And he's been up to it so far. He jumps ahead of Hiss, who has a hit and a ground out. And that one bounces in there. Yeah, I would say when your uh, number three pitcher can come into a top ten matchup and is carrying a shutout into the sixth, yeah. you got some depth. Cavs shut out Marion Local on Thursday in Mac play two days ago. There's a pop-up. Is there room for A.J. Harlemert or the third baseman, I should say? Howell, no, it's out of play. One ball, two strikes. A little harder to tell exactly where those foul balls are going from this first base side vantage point rather than when you're behind the plate watching the game. Hiss back behind, or back in the batter's box, I should say, down a ball and two strikes. Mason Welch peers in over the top of the web of that glove and delivers. Another breaking ball is fouled back. Coldwater, the home team on the board for this game at a uh, neutral site here at Defiance. 
One ball, two strikes, two outs. Nobody on here in the sixth. A chopper pulled foul. Howell came charging in and fielded that ball, but it had hit in foul territory. Home plate umpire Jeffrey Bachman on the call. So Hiss will have to make the track back to the box. A.J. Harlemert hands him his bat. As I mentioned, this is a all turf facility, but you can already see where they had to replace the turf in the front of the right-hand batter's box and in front of the pitcher's rubber. That's where the majority of your foot traffic is. One ball, two strikes, the pitch. Pulled foul. The other area that will wear out quicker is sliding into second base. You'll see that area start to age pretty quickly before the rest of the surface. Also looks like there's a little bit of a seam developing just in the fair side of first base. One ball, two strikes. That's a fastball pulled foul. So this is the longest at bat, I would say by far, for Mason Welch today on the mound for Coldwater. As Hess has fouled off several pitches here. And again, during that last bat for Coldwater, Curtis Dewar was warming up. He's in right field, so. Should they feel the need to go to Doer at some point, he's probably ready to go. Well, to just as soon end this sixth inning right here. Hiss has been a foul ball machine to this point. That ball's upstairs. 59 miles an hour. Well, several pitches we've seen under 60 from Mason Welch. And I think this is why <clears throat> you see Hiss so far on front, too, because just an inning ago, you know, we saw 82 up on the scoreboard from the radar. And that one looped in at 57, and it was way high. So Connor Hiss has run the count full. Trying to get something started for the Eagles. Welch has set down seven in a row since a hit by Elkert. Fastball hit the other way to right coming in. Doer and he'll make the grab. Good at bat by Hiss and pretty good contact there, but ultimately Welch wins the battle and retires the side in order for the second straight inning and he has set down the last eight. On to the bottom of the sixth. Coldwater looking to add to a three nothing lead. You're watching High School Baseball on WOSN. Bottom of the sixth on the People's Bank of Coldwater scoreboard, 3-0 Cavs. People's Bank, we are invested in the communities we serve as the first pitch of the sixth inning is low and outside to Evan Harlemert from Connor Hiss. Cavs looking to play out on here, three outs away from a win, but just a three-run lead, so surely would like to add to it here with hitters five, six, and seven due up in Coach Corey Clanky's lineup. Two balls and nothing. Hard a looper over second drops in for a hit. Evan Harlemer is the first hit of the day. He had walked earlier. That one had just enough elevation to elude the second baseman, Connor Arnold. And the Cavs have their leadoff man aboard. And we got a, who is it? Cavs bring in a, a pinch runner, Brady Layfeld. Brady Layfeld will be the pinch runner Here's for Harlemert. Luke Sudoff, the first baseman, now the batter. 3 0 Coldwater, looking to add to it. That one's way up and in, and a good save behind the dish by Berkemeyer. Cavs three runs on seven hits. There is a pick move to first. 
Afl playing in just his second game so far this year. Doesn't even have an official at bat yet, so in a big spot coming in for pinch running. There is a strike to Howe, or to Luke Sudoff, excuse me. One ball, one strike, Connor Hiss comes set, the runner goes. Ball, throw down, and uh, did he stay on the base? He did, safe. Brady Layfeld has a stolen base. See on the instant replay, Layfeld tries to go wide. And it's hard to tell right there as the umpire is well playing coming from behind, but it does look like Layfeld managed to maintain contact all the way through the slide. Two balls, one strike to Luke Sudoff. He'll try and bring that runner home. And that's a line drive to left center field. That's gonna get the job done easily as that's gonna bounce all the way to the fence. And just cruising into first with an RBI double is Luke Sudoff. And was that a karate kid pose on second base? You see that? He did the karate kid thing as he got <laughs> out on the second base. That's their deal, right? Yeah. Well, they probably have multiple things they do, but now a, a pinch runner will come in. This is Cody Stepwag. So Brady Layfeld scored on the double by Luke Sudoff. Cody Depweg runs for him. As Mason Welch will now bat. So an RBI for Luke Sudoff. His sixth of the year. Mason Welch has a couple of singles. He's ahead in the count, one ball and nothing. Four nothing now, Cavs with the lead. Ball outside. And we haven't seen anybody get up and warm up for Liberty Benton, but you wonder how much longer Hiss will be able to go. I think at this point, they'd really just like for him to finish this game, not have to use another pitcher. As there's only one inning to go. We're in the bottom of the sixth. Four nothing Cavs, three balls and nothing now. And Hiss gets a strike to Welch, who singled in the second off the starter Lieb, singled in the fourth off Connor Hiss. Ball four. That is the fourth walk issued by Liberty Mint pitching. Now it looks like Braylon Blockberger is gonna bat, but before that, we might get some changes here for Liberty Benton as well. So, looks like the right fielder, or sorry, the left fielder is going to come in and pitch for Liberty Benton. So while we sort all this out, let's take a break here. We are in the sixth inning. Coldwater has scored to take a 4-0 lead. We'll be back with the changes on WOSN. Landon Stansberry has come into the game to pitch. He came out of left field. Literally, I'm not just saying he's out of left field. He moved in from left field. Seth Elkert has replaced him in left field. The pitcher, Connor Hiss, has gone back to his third base spot. And Mason Maud is now out of the game. So Curtis Doerr will bat for Coldwater. First and second, nobody out. Looks like we're gonna have a pinch hitter. Well, they are gonna pinch hit as well. Yeah, this is Cole Etzler pinch hitting for Doerr. I think that might be a little bit of what the confusion is. You see the umpire out talking. Well, coach trying to get the lineup right. Initially, it looked like Corey Klenke was going to pinch hit Braylon Blockberger before the pitching change was made as he had strolled toward the plate. But Cole Etzler will be the hitter. He's pinch hitting for Curtis Dewar here. Left hand batter. Nobody out still. Bunt attempt, but the pitch misses. This inning started with Evan Harlemert singling his pinch runner Brady Layfeld stole second and scored on a double by Luke Sudoff. 
There is the bunt third base side and forget about it. Base hit for Cole Etzler. How about that? That was a heck of a bunt by Cole Etzler who plays pretty regularly for Coldwater. A 323 hitter coming in. And that loads the bases for Keegan Brueggemann. No, now we've got another pinch hitter. This is Braylon Blockberger. He fouls one back. It looks like Coldwater also put a pinch runner out there. It's number 14. Uh, Cop is out as he looks like he's running for Mason Kyle Welch. Brand for Welch, okay. Lots of changes here. We're trying to keep up. Blockberger. Pops it up with the bases loaded and nobody out. Infield fly rule in effect, and the ball is grabbed by the second baseman, Arnold. So one out. As Braylon Blockberger pops out. Top of the lineup now. Here's Marcel Blassen game. He takes a strike from the third pitcher of the day, Landon Stansberry for Liberty Benton. He came in with first and second, gave up a bunt hit and got an out. Just missed with that one. One ball, one strike. Cavaliers adding insurance here. They lead 4 nothing. There is a strike with the breaking ball. One ball, two strikes. Marcel Blassen game one for three. He singled, stole second, and scored in the third inning. There's a ball hit up the middle, diving shortstop. Can't make a play anywhere, though. Lincoln Garlock playing in, was able to field that ball, but when he went to the turf, that meant he couldn't really get anything on a throw. He thought about throwing from the seat of his pants over to third to get an out, but thought better of it. And then by the time he was able to right himself and turn and maybe flip it to second, it was too late. That's an RBI single for Marcel Blasen game to make it 5-0. Ball one to Braylon Harlemer. So the Cavs have added two insurance runs here in the bottom of the sixth with that 5-0 lead on the People's Bank of Coldwater scoreboard. Here's a swing and a miss. Raylan Harlemert is three for three, two doubles and a single. He has driven in a run. He has scored twice. With one out, they're still playing in on the infield is Liberty Benton. Ball two outside. Cavs scored a run in the first. They added two in the third and two here in the sixth. Three balls and a strike. So nowhere to put Braylon Harlemert with the bases loaded. We'll see if Landon Stansberry can get a strike here. He does. That's to get me over fastball there. Ball four. So Harlemer will get an RBI on the walk, his second RBI of the day. And the Cavs now lead it six to nothing. As Kaup comes across the plate to score. Catcher Eugene Harlemer. Pinch runner Justin Kaup. AJ Harlemer will hit. Ball one. AJ is 0 for 2 with a walk. Ball two as Landon Stansberry is struggling with his control here. Gonna get a visit from his catcher, Brady Berkmeyer. And trying to slow Stansberry down just a little bit, giving him a minute here as he mentioned that. Controls. He's really struggling with it. 
Cavs looking for their eighth straight win since a 7-0 loss at New Bremen. They followed that the next day with a 3-0 win over Rushi. Very impressive win there. Two balls and a strike now. Stansberry delivers. Borderline pitch misses, three and one. Coldwater's already scored three here in the sixth inning. And now they've scored four. Second straight bases loaded walk. Cole Etzler scores on this one. Cavs now will send A.J. Harlemert to the plate. Or I'm sorry, Braxton Howell. That was A.J. Harlemert that walked. Braxton Howell is now the batter. Ball high. So since they loaded the bases, they got a single, a couple walks to score three runs. There's a swing and a miss. Howell's trying to send that one all the way to the fence. Big cut. Came right through it. Stansberry's just trying to find back-to-back -back strikes, and he got it. There he got a fastball past him. One ball, two strikes. Still just one out in this inning. There's an off-speed pitch. It's lifted into center and a base hit. And the Cavs will... Just goes station to station. Marcel Blasting game scores. And Braxton Howell, RBI single. Makes it eight to nothing. So the Cavs just uh, keep pouring it on here. They've scored five in the inning. And uh, Stansberry continues to struggle. Well, now the Cavs, another hit, might just end this here in the sixth inning. Good run rule them here. Evan Harlemert will try to do that at the plate. Ball down. Evan has a hit today and a walk, so officially one for two. Landon Stansbury, the third pitcher of the day for LB, gets a strike over. Infield still in for Liberty Benton with the just one out. That's when it's in on his fists and fouled off. Landon Stansberry desperately trying to get out of this inning. It's already seen five calves to score. Reaching out and poking it through the drawn-in infield for a run-scoring hit is Evan Harlemer. And that's the, I guess, danger of having the infield drawn in is that a ball that's not that hard hit like that one is going to get through. RBI for Evan Harlemer. Now Luke Sudoff will bat. There's baseman Luke Sudoff. Raylan Harlemert scored. Bases are still loaded. Six in the inning, nine nothing total. There's a strike. So one more run will end this one here via the run rule. Luke Sudoff doubled and scored last time up. Swing and a miss there, he's down two strikes now. Tropical smoothies are now on sale in the concession stand for five dollars each. That one's upstairs. One ball, two strikes. And a off speed pitch. And Sudoff able to hold back long enough to foul it off. He had an RBI double earlier in this sixth inning. He is now the 11th man to bat in the sixth. Swing and a miss, and a strikeout for Stansbury will allow the infield to go back to regular spots. 
pitcher, Mason Welch. And Mason Welch, the pitcher, will now stand in. Strike call. So the Cavs with 11 men sent to the plate. Six have scored. Three are on base. Two have been put out. And there's a little bloop in the right field, and that is going to be knocked down but not caught, and that will end the game. So what a day by Mason Welch. Got it done on the mound and then ended it to secure his complete game shutout with a single there. A nice effort by the right fielder, Jared Hahn. He dove and got his glove on it, but as he hit the ground, his glove got kind of turned under him, and that ball squirted out. And the game comes to an end as the Cavaliers score seven runs in the sixth inning to win via run rule as they beat Liberty Benton 10 to nothing in this matchup of top 10 teams in the Ohio Brett Prep Baseball Report Spring Classic here at Defiance High School. And as Nate was just saying, Mason Welch went the distance on the mound and he had three hits and a walk. He drove in a run, he scored a run. So clearly he's our star of the game. Welch throws the four hit shutout. He did not walk a man. He struck out two and he allowed just four singles. Only once did the Eagles have two base runners in an inning. He had three one, two, three innings among the six that he threw. And with the win, Coldwater now 14 and two. Liberty Benton drops to 15 and three. There you see all of our uh, crew on board today. We appreciate everybody here at Defiance High School, including AD Jerry Beauty. And uh, that's gonna wrap it up on the People's Bank of Coldwater scoreboard. The final in this one, Coldwater 10 and Liberty Benton nothing. For Nate Garlock, this is Todd Walker saying good afternoon, everybody.